Hello lovelies and welcome back to another video. Everywhere I go, plant-based So today I'm gonna to be answering your questions on my personal experience with erythrophobia. So first of all, in case you guys don't know what erythrophobia is, it's a fear of blushing. Usually the perfect formula for someone to have erythrophobia is first the ability to blush, and the second thing is social anxiety or a social phobia. Because usually people that have erythrophobia have an intense fear of about being judged by others or a fear of being the center of attention. Because the thing is, when we're in social situations, we know that if we blush, that's going to bring more attention to us. And so this can cause a really vicious cycle because since we have a fear of attention being brought to us, this can make us really worried about blushing in social situations. And so if we start to feel our face heat up or we start to feel ourselves blush, then we realize that more attention might be drawn to us and we start to get really anxious and worried about what other people think about us. Um, and so this can actually cause us to blush even more. And so this causes a vicious cycle where we're embarrassed about our face turning red, so then our face turns even more red, and then because it's turning more red, we get even more embarrassed, which causes it to turn even more red. So this can actually cause anticipatory anxiety, where it can actually cause us to be afraid of going to any sort of social gathering or a social event, because we're essentially afraid that we're gonna be stuck in a social situation where we are going to blush and we're not gonna be able to escape from that situation. So this can make people really anxious about going to work or doing a presentation or even going to school or even just going to hang out with a friend or a family member. Any situation where we know we might um, blush and where someone might see us blush can cause us a lot of anxiety and can essentially cause us to want to isolate ourselves and avoid all social interaction. And unfortunately when we're avoiding social interactions this can make our erythrophobia a lot worse because it causes us to not develop our social skills, um, we lose a lot of confidence in ourselves, which ultimately just makes the erythrophobia worse. So basically everything about erythrophobia is just such a vicious cycle and can really end up doing a lot of damage to a person's life. This is something that has had a massive impact in my personal life, but I have made a lot of improvements over the years. And before I actually made my first video on erythrophobia a few years ago, I literally still thought that I was like one of the only people out there that had this problem. Like I had no idea that it was such a widespread problem. And so that's why I think it's super important to make videos about it because I wanna bring more awareness to this. If you don't have erythrophobia, but maybe you know someone in your personal life that does blush often, or if you just happen to come across someone whose face turns really red, the most important thing to do is to not point it out. Because it's really important to know that the person that's blushing already knows that they're blushing, so they really don't need anyone pointing it out to them. And in fact, pointing it out is just gonna make it a lot worse for that person. It'll likely make them turn a lot more red, and it will make them feel a lot more ashamed and embarrassed. And it's very likely for that person that blushing has had a really big negative impact on their mental health. And so it's really important to not point it out to draw more attention to them and to make them feel more ashamed and embarrassed than they already probably are. Today I'm wearing a red shirt because I thought it would be appropriate for this video on blushing. I actually used to own zero red clothes in my wardrobe because honestly just even someone saying red made me blush. And so honestly just like seeing the color red or hearing someone say the color red um, would remind me of my fear of blushing, which would then make me blush and um, go in this vicious cycle again. I also thought that if I wore red, it would bring out the red in my skin tone more. And I also thought that the color red would make me stand out more. And honestly, in any social situation, I just wanted to basically hide in the corners and I didn't want anyone to notice me or see me. And so I thought the color red would make me stand out more. Um, which is the last thing that I wanted. Especially if I had a blushing attack where I didn't want anyone to notice me. But since my fear of blushing has gotten so, so much better over the years, it's been honestly like a big accomplishment to buy this red shirt because I never ever thought that I would get to a place where I would be able to wear red clothing. Okay, so the next question is, I'm not a blusher, but why does it happen? 
So basically, erythrophobia often occurs in people that have social anxiety. So usually when we're in a social situation, we are often quite anxious. And when we're in a situation where we perceive a threat, our sympathetic nervous system stimulates the fight or flight response. So this means that our amygdala detects a sense of fear or a threat in our environment. And when this occurs, it sends a message to our hypothalamus. Our hypothalamus then activates our sympathetic nervous system by sending signals to our adrenal glands to pump out epinephrine into our our bloodstream. And epinephrine is a hormone that causes a number of physiological changes in our body. It can cause our pupils to dilate, our heart to beat faster, it can cause us to be a lot more alert and have heightened senses, and it can also act as a vasodilator on certain blood vessels. So this basically means that our blood vessels widen to improve blood flow and oxygen throughout our body. And for blushers this means that the vasodilation occurs in the blood vessels in our face, but also sometimes in our neck and our chest and our ears. And basically our body is just doing this for our own survival. Basically it thinks that there is a threat in our environment and so that's why it is producing this response. Unfortunately our brain doesn't know that there's actually no threat in our environment and that it's actually producing a response that is making the situation a lot worse for us. So that is essentially why we blush. So the next question is, who do you blush in front of? So I'm currently at the point where I don't blush in front of people who I feel comfortable with. I find that I don't blush at all in front of William's family. In the five years that we've been together, I've probably only blushed in front of his family like two or three times. And I think this is because they're honestly like some of the most non-judgmental people that I've ever met. And I just feel really, really comfortable around them. And so I don't tend to blush in front of people that I'm I'm really comfortable around. And so I don't think I've literally ever blushed in front of William and I've never blushed in front of my mom because these are the two people that I'm the most comfortable with. But I will have to say that when my blushing was at its worst, which was when I was in high school, I did get to the point where I was blushing in front of some of my family members or even when I was just by myself in my room at home. And I still do blush sometimes to this day, but what I find is that my blush attacks are not nearly as intense and they don't nearly last as long as they used to. And so when this occurs, it usually happens in front of people that I don't know really well or people where I'm afraid about what they're going to think about me blushing. So it can usually happen when I'm in public or around strangers or when I go to certain appointments or it can just happen when I'm like walking around the grocery store or it, actually the place where it happens the most is when I'm standing in line at the grocery store. And this is because you're kind of stuck standing in line and there's lots of bright lights and you're surrounded by strangers and you're usually not talking so you have lots of time to be like thinking about the situation that you're in and gives you lots of time for your anxiety to build up. But I find that it can also happen in front of coworkers and in front of classmates as well. So the next question is, did you have anyone that understood you? When I was suffering from it the most, I had never met anyone that blushed as much as I did and I never even saw anyone blushing. And so, especially in high school, I literally thought that I was the only one that had this problem. Because I remember I opened up to my closest friends about it and I opened up to my parents about it, but none of them had ever experienced something like this before. So they didn't really understand what I was going through and they especially didn't understand the extent that it negatively impacted my life. And to be honest, it wasn't until a few years ago when I filmed my first erythrophobia video um, sharing my experience that I realized just how many people have this fear and share the same experiences that I did. And then after I filmed that video, someone introduced me to the iBlush Facebook group. And so if any of you guys are experiencing this fear of blushing, I highly recommend you join the iBlush Facebook group because it will just show you that there's so many people that are in the exact same situation that you are in. And so it really helps you to feel a lot less alone. The next question is, actually, I'm gonna take a snack break right now because I am really hungry. Okay, I apologize if I have any crumbs on my face anywhere. <laughs> and I'm realizing that I'm probably gonna have to turn this into a two-part video because I'm surprisingly getting a lot of questions in from you guys, which I was actually not expecting um, because I asked you guys this question on my Instagram and I didn't really realize how many of you guys on my Instagram were following me because of my erythrophobia videos. So um, I'm going to answer one more question in this video and then I will make a part two of this video. Actually, I'm gonna answer two more questions here. The next question is, did teachers think something was wrong with you? So thankfully most of my teachers were super 
kind and never pointed it out or anything. There was only one incidence where we actually had a substitute teacher one day and I remember sitting in the front row of the class and usually my face would honestly just turn red just from sitting in class because I was like sitting there quietly and I was like constantly worrying about it. So my face of course turned bright red and then the substitute teacher pointed it out and I remember him saying like oh my gosh, Alice, your face is so red, are you okay? And of course, this just made my blushing a lot worse and just made me turn even more red. And I don't even remember what I did in that situation. I think I literally just like put my head down and like didn't say anything, which is pretty sad. But that is thankfully the only incidence where a teacher pointed out my blushing. Most of the time it was just my fellow classmates. And the last question I'm gonna answer in this video is, what is your opinion about you should overcome it? versus you should make peace with it. So essentially, I think that you really can't go about it with the mentality that you are going to overcome it. The only way that you're actually going to be able to manage it and overcome it is to have the mentality that you're going to make peace with it. So by actually, by making peace with it, that is what is actually gonna help you to overcome it. Because the sentence, you should overcome it, sounds like you have a lot of resistance and you just want to like make it stop and push it away. But ironically, the more you try to push it away, the more it's going to fight back and the more that you're actually going to blush. So ironically, by accepting it and by making peace with it, that is what makes you blush less often and that's what makes the blushing episodes a lot more, a lot less intense. Um, and often people with the mentality saying like you should just overcome it, this can lead to people wanting to get the surgery that you can get to stop yourself from blushing. It's a very expensive surgery and I'm pretty sure it also is not guaranteed that it's going to work. And to be honest, in my opinion, blushing can actually be um, such a gift if you allow it to be because it gives you the opportunity to learn a lot more about yourself and to work on your personal development and to really push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And it's also something that's a part of you and it's something that makes you unique. And in reality, it's really nothing that you should be ashamed of because it's a really special quality about you and it's something that makes you uniquely you. Another thing is that because you've had this struggle in your life um, and because you've felt this sense of embarrassment and shame, it really can help you to actually be a lot more compassionate and empathetic to others. And also it can actually help other people who also have a fear of blushing because if they are able to see that there are other people out there with this same struggle and that can actually really help them with their mental health because they know that there's someone else there that's going through the exact same thing as them which can help them to feel less alone because they know that they've experienced the exact same thing so they're less afraid to blush in front of that person because they know that they're not going to receive judgment from someone who also has the same fear. And that's something that we've joked a lot about in the I Blush Facebook group is that we should just start like a community for blushers or basically like a meetup group where we can just like meet up with fellow blushers because that would give us the opportunity to socialize um, essentially without the fear of blushing because we know that if we do blush we're not going to get judged by our fellow blushers. And I think a lot of people in that group actually like avoid social interactions and so and so this would be a really great opportunity for a social event where we actually don't have to be afraid of blushing. So anyways, those are all the questions that I'm going to answer in this video. Stay tuned for part two of answering your questions about my personal experience with erythrophobia. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Don't forget to be kind to yourselves. Until next time, peace out guys. Bye. I never lost sight and that's the main difference Not a stock going up, campaign hitting up Everywhere I go, I'm plant-based